AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Nissan and Chrysler call it quits. Russia wants to merge its top three car companies. And when the clunker money runs out, Ford worries about a sales collapse in Europe. And our feature story today takes a look at the new Nissan Cube. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Thursday, August 27, 2009, and here's what's happening. Chrysler and Nissan called off their deal to supply vehicles to each other, and undoubtedly this was a decision made by Sergio Marchionne, the CEO of Fiat, who's also running Chrysler. Why would he cancel the deal? First off, Nissan was going to supply a version of the Versa for Chrysler to sell in South America. But Fiat is one of the biggest automakers in South America and can help Chrysler there far better than Nissan can. Also, Nissan was supposed to supply Chrysler with a small car for sale around the world. Again, Fiat can do that too. Then Chrysler was supposed to build a version of the Titan pickup truck for Nissan. But it sounds like Nissan called off this part of the deal. Chrysler says it is still interested in selling trucks to Nissan. Just as clunker mania dies down in the American market, Bloomberg reports that Ford is lobbying European governments to keep the cash flowing. Ford's worried that once the scrappage schemes in Europe come to an end next month, car sales are going to crash. Indeed, we reported a couple of months ago that Renault's CEO Carlos Ghosn was warning of the same thing. European governments put far more money into their incentive programs than the U.S. government did. Germany alone put $7 billion into its program, but automakers want to see it gradually phased out and not get cut off all at once. What once looked like a promising answer to help the U.S. wean off foreign oil, biofuels are now out of favor. According to the Wall Street Journal, the viability of biodiesel and ethanol are being threatened by the global economic collapse, too much capacity, low gas prices, and the government dragging its feet about rule changes for fuel mixes. And according to the National Biodiesel Board, two-thirds of U.S. biodiesel production capacity is now idle. But maybe they can export that excess biodiesel to Thailand. According to Wards, the country will switch to using B5, a blend of 5% biodiesel in diesel fuel. Currently, B5 makes up about half of all the diesel fuel sold in Thailand. State-owned Russian conglomerate, Russian Technologies, plans to merge three auto companies that it owns a stake in. According to the AFP, automaker Autovaz, truck maker Kamaz, and engine company Auto Diesel will be merged into a new firm called Rosaldo. Interestingly, Renault owns a stake in Autovaz and Daimler has a stake in Kamaz. Since it's celebrating its 100th birthday this year, Audi decided to spruce up its logo to mark the occasion. According to Autoblog, the refreshed rings are slightly flatter and a little harder edged than the ones they replace. The company also tweaked the font it uses for its name. It's more conventional looking than the swept back lettering used before. Could this be a new trend? Several other automakers have redesigned their logos this year, notably Citroen. Uh-oh, more bad news for Toyota. Just after announcing a big recall in China, it's recalling almost 96,000 vehicles in the U.S. for a potential brake problem. Certain 2009 and 2010 models of the Corolla, Matrix, and Scion XD with the 1.8-liter engine are affected. Over time, moisture can collect and, in cold weather, freeze in the brake system. The water comes from the PCV or positive crankcase ventilation system, which vents fumes from inside the engine. Toyota dealers will install a redesigned air intake connector, which should take about an hour. In other breaking news, sorry, couldn't resist, Autoblog is running some photos originally posted on the VW Vortex forums that shows what are possibly the worst brakes ever. As you can see in the pictures, the rotor on the back of this Mercury Grand Marquis is completely rotted away. Looking closer, there's literally nothing there. I wonder how many miles it took to do that much damage. Coming up next, a look at the new Nissan Cube Chrome. We'll be back before you know it. Changing tires out here could be dangerous. But with these tires, I don't need to worry. 
Bridgestone. More and more, automakers are starting to offer funky new compact cars that focus on design. Arguably one of the first in the segment, at least here in the U.S., was the Honda Element. Shortly after it came out, it was followed by the popular Scion X-Speed. Now, there's a bunch of other vehicles in the segment. Here's my take on one of the newest offerings out there. In the Autoline garage this week, we've got the Nissan Cube, which starts at about $14,000. But this is the Chrome edition of the Cube, which prices out at 20 grand. What do you get for the Chrome edition? Well, you get these Chrome bars on the grill, also Chrome down on the lower valence panel, and chrome wheels. But what you really notice on the side of this car is the oval shape of the windows, front and rear and the back. It's a little bit funky though how they did this because while it looks nice and ovally on the outside, on the inside they didn't really quite finish the corners, although that doesn't really bother me that much. What you'll really notice on the back window is they added this cheap piece of plastic to give it an oval look because without it, it would just end truncated like that. What I really like about the back end is how asymmetrical the design is. You'll notice that the glass wraps around the side on the right hand side, but not on the left. But then when you look inside here, it's all kind of weird. There isn't a whole lot of room back here and they've got this cheap, I, this divider or something that goes on here. It's real flimsy. It, it doesn't stay on well. I never figured it out. But what you'll really notice is while there's plenty of room for some bags of groceries, even if you lay the back seats down, I couldn't even get my mountain bike in here, and that's because of how short this vehicle is. But the proof in the pudding comes in the driving, so let's go take this thing for a spin. We have a longer version of that package on the Nissan Cube, which you can find right now in the John's Journal section of our website, AutolineDetroit.tv. And don't forget that Autoline After Hours is tonight, live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be talking with Jessica Caldwell of Edmunds.com about which vehicles sold best under the Cash for Clunkers program. The government says the Toyota Corolla sold the best. Edmunds says the government is counting it all wrong. You'll be amazed to learn the convoluted way in which the government came up with its numbers. Tune in tonight to hear the details firsthand. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.